Hi there, it's James Arter here. Hope you're doing really well. So I wanted to talk today about Guitar Cab Impulse Responses. They're absolutely everywhere right now and rightfully so because they're absolutely awesome. But how do they work and how can we use them to create a fantastic guitar tone? Stick around and I'll show you what I know. Before we get started, please do that thing and hit the like if you like the video. If you want to subscribe, hit the notification bell and the subscribe and you'll get notified of any upcoming videos. Also, if you want some free stuff, then sign up to the mailing list below in the description and I'll send you an EQ cheat sheet as well as some one shot drum hits that you can use in your mixes. Okay, that's a boring bit over. Now firstly, what are impulse responses? Essentially, it's an audio capture. It's like a snapshot of a recording of a guitar cab. So companies will take various snapshots. They'll take, in fact, they'll take hundreds of one particular guitar cab and they'll vary all of these snapshots in terms of position, the mics being used, the cabs being used, and, and even the speakers that are being used inside the cabs. And then once we've got all of these snapshots, once we've got these audio captures, we can then take our amplifiers or amp sims and put them through these snapshots and essentially it's like we're playing through a guitar cab but without having to have the guitar cab here without having to mic it up without having to really upset your neighbors and also to be able to actually use some mics that you wouldn't usually have had or to just be or to just have settings and and cabs and all different setups that you wouldn't usually have so these are really useful things to have now to enable you to essentially play back these audio captures or play through these audio captures you need some sort of ir loader most amp sims come with one already inbuilt they've done a whole load of capturing themselves and they've got their ir loader built into their plugin and then through that plugin you can cycle through the different irs the different mic placements and positions to really craft your tone but what if you don't want to use the inbuilt IRs well you can get external ones there's so many different ones on the internet I'm going to show you a couple today and if the plugin permits it then it will have an external loader and you can actually load the IRs into that if it doesn't or if you just want to use a different plugin to do so there are lots of different IR loaders about and I'll leave some links in the description so you can see a few that you can try the majority of them are free and also aside from using amp simulation plugins you can also actually use a real amp what you will need to have is some sort of load box to capture the sound of the amplifier itself for example there's one that I use called torpedo captor which is by two notes with that that will essentially take your amplifier sound into your computer at a safe level and it also deals with the load from the from the amp and then allows you to put that signal through any IRs that you have again via the IR loader but before you start playing around with IRs it can be really useful to actually understand what is going on for example if you're choosing a specific microphone it's really useful to understand what that microphone is going to sound like and why so when you're combining IRs or if you're just choosing one to go through you have a bit of an idea about what sound you're looking for and how to get it so firstly I thought it might be handy to just have a little look at mic placement and mic position and how it affects the overall sound so let's dive into that first okay so let's start with mic position for demonstration purposes I'm using STL amp hub and I'm going to use their inbuilt IR loader and I'm using the ones which actually come with amp hub they're actually really good so there's more than enough options and in terms of cabs and microphones in here to get you going so you don't necessarily have to try any external ones but we'll have a look at how to do that a bit later too so firstly it's important to understand how different a microphone can sound depending on which part of the speaker it's pointed at and this is a first step to essentially crafting your guitar tone so for this example i'm just gonna start with a trusty sm57 it's the mic which is so often used and rightfully so it's great and let's see how the sound changes depending on where it is on the speaker All right so let's just have a little listen to this sound to, to begin with <laughs> Now this so far is currently pointed directly at the center of the cone. The center is always the brightest. And if we go to the far edge, this is where the darkest part of the tone will be on the speaker. Let's go back to the middle. And back to the edge. Thank you. 
So you can see there really is quite a drastic difference. Now what tends to be the sweet spot is around here, somewhere in between the two, where the dust cap meets the edge just there. And more often than not, if you're just using one microphone, this is always a great place to start. So let's have a little listen. To the center again. To the edge. And to the sweet spot. So instantly you get a bit of an idea of how different that can sound. Next is the actual distance from the speaker itself. The current distance right now is right close up to the speaker. So I imagine where the where this one is, is maybe maybe right close up or maybe just a few centimeters away. Now what tends to happen is when you're closer to the speaker, you're gonna experience the proximity effect, which is essentially a boosting of the bass. And then when you're further away, it's gonna be a little bit thinner and a little bit brighter. So let's just see the difference there. We're gonna stick in the sweet spot for now. And further away. and back close up. And then the final one which tends to which tends to change the tone a little bit more is the angle. As it stands, we're going directly on the speaker, which is considered on axis. But if you turn the microphone away at an angle, then you'll be shooting off axis and this is where and you'll get a slightly different tone. So it's it's going to be that much brighter and maybe a little bit thinner too. Now at a 45 degree angle. And back. And once more. And there you go, it's really quite a different sound. So that's the main thing to remember. Center of the cone is brighter and more mid-range. The edge of the cone is darker and less mid-range. And then the sweet spot tends to be about halfway between the two. Then with the distance, further away is brighter, more open and often a little bit thinner. And closer to the speaker can be a little bit darker and has a lot more bass. The next step is understanding how the microphone can make a difference to the tone. Now, as I said before, the SM57 is a go-to mic and always does a wonderful job, but it might not be what you want for your tone. I'm just gonna show you a few different ones so you can get a bit of an idea. So this is a 57. Another often used dynamic is a Sennheiser 421. It's quite a similar sound, but you get a little bit more, little bit more low end and a little bit more high end as well. And we'll give you one more. This is a ribbon 122, so based on a Royer, and you're gonna get a much darker tone with this. So cycling between the three, and of course you, there, there are other mic options, but I'm just gonna to stick to the main three at the moment. So as you can see, they all sound very different. Now, once you've got a bit of an idea of how the sound of the microphone can make a difference and also the microphone placement can make a difference, that's when you can start to really craft your tone. Now, I'm gonna stick within Amp Hub at the moment because it's a very good visual reference. So it gives you quite a good idea of what different mics sound like when they're put together. A lot of the time I have a bit of an idea of what I'm going for anyway, so I'll start with the microphone that I'm looking for, get the best position for that, and then use the, the second microphone or, or the second speaker to fill in whatever I'm missing. So for example, if we start in the same place we were before with the 57 in the sweet spot, you can't go wrong with it. At the moment, as it stands, I'm just listening to the left side, so this, this one here. <laughs> Sounds great, but it could maybe do with a little bit more low end. So if we just go over to the other side, I've got a ribbon mic loaded up because as we noticed before, they're much darker mics. 
and currently I've set it all the way to to the edge of the speaker. So so the edge has more bass, is a much darker tone, and I'm also using a dark mic. Is this going to work? I don't know, but we're going to just have a little listen. So we we'll just listen to that first. Really quite a different tone to the 57, which is this. actually makes the 57 sound quite thin now but if we just start to blend in some of the ribbon mic then you'll start to hear some of the low end appear already that's much more chunky now i've i've got an interesting mix there but i'm just now going to adjust the microphone on the ribbon side and just make that just a little bit brighter so that would be bringing it more towards the center of the cone <laughs> Doesn't sound quite as woolly on the low end, but it still has the chunk and the fatness of the ribbon. Now there are so many different combinations that you can try and there's lots of information out there to give you different setups, but I'm not here to give you a list of different setups that you can try. What I'm trying to do today is give you an idea of how the different mics and different placement works so, so you can understand how to craft it yourself. But one thing I do find really useful when you're trying to dial in these tones is, is to not always do it in isolation. So yeah, I'm doing it in isolation at the moment just to get an idea of how I want the guitar to sound. Of course, this, this is super important to all guitarists out there in the world, all four gazillion of them, but it's often best to actually hear it in a mix so you can hear how they sound in context to all the other instruments. And also a lot of the time, guitars tend to be hard left and hard right. And if you're just listening to one guitar on its own on the left, it's not always gonna be a good representation of the sound of the guitars because you're generally hearing them as two guitars. So what I would firstly do is is once I've got a sound which I'm comfortable with, I'd copy this over to the other guitar, but then link the two channels. So any change that I'm making on one side happens on the other side too. So I've done that already. And we've got these two guitars panned. So instantly you get a bit more of an idea of what they're going to sound like together. Just for the record, I've slightly changed the tone a little bit here and gone with an old favorite combination, which is the ribbon right in the middle there. So the darkest mic, but in the brightest position, and then the 57 in the sweet spot. But I'm going to play with that within the mix so you get an idea of how they sound together. So let's just bring everything else in and then I'll play with the tone a little bit more and you'll get to see how different it can sound with everything else in. So as you can see, once I got the guitars in there, I started to play with the tone a little bit more just so it could fit into the mix that little bit more. Now, I'm not suggesting that you wait until you're mixing to do this because that is opening a whole can of worms. But what I am saying is the main thing is to is to essentially hear the sound of your guitar with the other instruments and not spend all the time disappearing down a rabbit hole trying to craft the perfect tone when actually once you're hearing it with everything else, it's not coming through as strong as it could do. Now, as mentioned before, you can, of course, use external IR loaders to play back these IRs too. There are a whole bunch out there. Majority of them are free. This is one also by STL Tones called NADIR or Nadir. Is that how you'd say it, maybe? And then you can find so many different IRs out there. I'm a fan of the Own Hammer ones because they just sound absolutely fantastic. 
they're really well recorded and and the selection is really comprehensive but when you're using irs like this it's important to understand all the basics which i which i went through at the beginning of the video to understand essentially what they all mean because most of the time the labeling on, on these things can look very very confusing at first for example if we look here in the own hammer bundle this is the heavy hitters one this is a mess of boogie cab lots of irs tend to, to be labeled in a fairly similar way so as we look over here own hammer 4x12 cab mesa boogie vintage 30 speakers 57 microphone and then all these numbers down here 0 to 10 is talking about the position 0 being the center of the cone and then 10 being the edge so in the same way that we looked at it before 0 will be the brightest 10 is going to be the darkest and then somewhere in the middle is where you're going to find what is often considered the sweet spot so if we look over here for example I'm just on the left hand side here and I'm just going to listen to that 57 right in around about the sweet spot <laughs> So now when we start blending from here, we have more of an understanding of what to mix in next. So for example, if I'm gonna go with a, a similar setup to what I was doing before, on the other side here, I've got the same, same mic as before, or very similar, Arroyo ribbon mic. So this is a one, two, one. It was actually one, two, two in Amp Hub. Still very, very similar. And we have a little listen to that and we'll just, we'll go towards the edge. <laughs> Much darker, and we've got the 57. And then Blender 2. Fantastic. And then let's hear that with the other guitar. And once more in the context of the mix. And there we go. So the main thing about using IRs and to get the best out of them is to really understand a little bit about how the sound of a microphone can make a difference and also the sound of the mic position. Once you have a bit of an understanding of that, it's easier to craft a tone because you're essentially using the two different microphones to, to paint your picture. You've got light and dark and you're blending them together or whatever combination you happen to be doing. But this does come with a warning. The more you get into guitar impulse responses, the easier it is to disappear down a rabbit hole. And speaking from experience, I've, I've got lost inside many for a very, very long time. So once you get an idea, find, find your favorites and then maybe create a few of your own presets with those favorites and then, and, then t and then tweak them from there. Otherwise, before you know it, you've spent two hours trying to craft a guitar tone and at the end of it, you end up using the first tone that you came across because that worked from the beginning and was right from the beginning and you've now just lost two hours of your life maybe two days. Depends how far it goes. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.